Have you ever wondered how Hypixel puts a bunch of random loot inside of chests for all their different minigames? Because in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to make that system. Let's start off in the onenable method of our main plugin class. First, we save the default configuration file, then we create a new instance of chest manager, passing in that configuration file, then finally we set up chest manager as an event listener because it'll handle whenever a player interacts with a chest on our minigame. We also have this reset command, which just calls the reset chests method on the chest manager. Now let's take a look at our chest chest manager. You can see at the top we have a set of locations. This is all of the chests that have been opened and filled. And then we have a list of loot items. This is the list of all the potential loot that can spawn inside of a chest. So let's start implementing chest manager. First, we need to load in all of the potential loot items from our config file. Here's our config file and you can see the loot item section followed by all of the different items that could spawn in a chest. If that section is null, we're going to send out a warning to the console so that the owner of the server can fix it. After that, we're going to loop over every single key in the loot items section. Each key represents a specific random loot item. We'll grab that configuration section, then we'll create a new loot item using that configuration section, and we'll add that to the master list of all loot items. If we go over to loot item, you'll see that it's currently empty. Let's go ahead and add all of the different properties that can be found on a loot item. You can see we have material, custom name, we also have enchantment to level map, chance, and then min and max amount. Inside of the constructor, let's set up all these different fields. We'll start by loading our material using the material.value of method. And if that fails, meaning that the material is invalid, it's just going to be set as air, which will be an empty slot in the inventory. Then we'll set up the custom name field here by grabbing the name of the loot item in the config file. After that, we're going to load in all of the enchantments that our item could have. We'll start by grabbing the enchantments configuration section on our loot item. If this section exists, then we're going to loop over all of its top level keys. After that, we can create the actual enchantment object by using enchantment.getByKey, passing in this namespace key.minecraft, and then passing in the key of the configuration section. This is just a fancy way of saying that vanilla enchantments will automatically be mapped as their string names into real bucket enchantments. If the enchantment exists and is not null, we can actually go ahead and get the level of it and apply it to our loot item. To get the level of the enchantment, we'll ask the enchantment section to grab the integer with the enchantment key, because each enchantment in the config file is the name or key of the enchantment, followed by the integer level of that enchantment. And with that, we can add it to our enchantment map here by passing in the enchantment and its respective level. And now we can wrap loot item up by adding in three more fields. And these are of course chance, min amount, and max amount. Now this chance double is actually really special because this determines how rare this item is in a chest. If we take a look at this example, config file, you'll see that the chance of this fire sword spawning is 0.1. This means that every single time it's selected randomly to be the item put inside of a chest, it has a 10% chance of actually being added to the chest's inventory. Let's finish writing the loot item class. First, we'll make a boolean method called should fill that takes in a random as an argument, and this will just return random.next double is less than chance. Random.next double will return something from 0 to 1, and if that value it returns is less than whatever chance is, then the should fill method will return true and we'll add the item to our chest. Now let's write a method called make, which takes in a thread local random and returns an item stack. First, let's figure out how many of this item we're trying to add to the chest, because that is random as well. We'll create a new integer called amount and set that equal to random.nextIn, passing in the minimum amount of items and the maximum amount plus one. The reason we're using thread local random is because it has this method, which takes in what's called an origin and also has a bound. This basically means give me a random number from this number to this number. Now that we have the amount of items we'd like to add to the chest, we can create our item stack, passing in the material and that amount. Next, let's get the item meta on the item stack. If the loot item's custom name is not null, we'll set up the display name on the item meta to the color code translated version of custom name. Next, if we know we have enchantments to add to this item, we need to add them onto the item meta. We'll start by looping over every single entry. An entry just has both fields of the map, so in our case this is enchantment and its level. And then for every single entry, we'll just add on the enchantment to the item meta, passing in the enchantment itself, its level, and then saying true for ignore level restriction, because whatever the user puts in the configuration file should be the level that it gets, regardless of any rules around those enchantments. We'll set the item meta on the item stack so that all of our changes take effect. And finally, we can return our item stack, which means loot item is ready to go. With loot item done, let's finish off our chest manager. Inside of the marked as open method, let's add the location that is passed in as an argument to the open chest set. And inside of has been open, we'll return if the open chest set contains the location, again passed in as an argument. 
Next up, inside of reset chests, let's clear the set of open chests so that all of the chests, when they are opened again, will have random and new items in them. And with that, we can now write the fill method, which takes in an inventory. This is the meat that will fill a bunch of random loot inside of our chest. So the first thing to do, and this one is up to you, I'm going to clear the inventory that's passed in so that no pre-existing loot is added to this chest when we fill it with a bunch of new loot. Then I'm going to grab an instance of thread local random, which I talked about in the loot item section. I've also created this set of loot items inside of the method itself. This is how we're going to keep track of all the loot items we've already added into an inventory. This will prevent duplicate items from showing up in a chest so that everything is unique. Then we're going to make a for loop using slot index as our integer variable, and we're going to go over every single slot in the inventory using inventory.getSize. Now inside of the loop, let's get a random loot item. We'll call lootitems.get, which requires an index of the item we'd like to access. And for that index, we'll pass in random.next int, which itself takes an argument, which will be our loot item size, so that we don't pass in an index that's out of bounds. Now that we have a random loot item, we'll check if we've already used it. If that's the case, we'll continue looping and skip this iteration. Otherwise, we will now add it to use because we're about to add it into the chest. Next, we'll call randomItem.ShouldFill, passing in the thread local random instance. If this returns true, like we said in the loot item section, we will then fill this item into the chest. And now we can make the item stack and then set that up in the inventory at the current slot index. And with that, there is only one thing left to do, which is fill random chests with loot whenever a player clicks on them. And we'll implement this inside of the onChestOpen method here, which is an event handler for inventory open event. First, we'll grab the holder of the inventory from this event. If the holder is a chest, we'll go ahead and check if it's been opened. If so, then we're going to stop running our code. And if the chest hasn't been opened yet, then we're going to mark it as opened and fill the block inventory of the chest with random items. There's only one thing left to do, which is support double chests. You can basically copy and paste your code down, change the type of chest to double chest here, and then changing the chest.get block inventory to just chest.get inventory. Really quick, before we test the plugin on the server, if you want to download it and all of the code, as well as the configuration file, which is for Hypixel Skywars as an example, you can do all of that on my Patreon for the lowest tier over there. That's linked down in the description. And once we hit 5,000 subscribers, I'll make the plugin 100% free. And with that, we can test our plugin on the server. So you see, I've got this random chest right here. If I open it up, we have a bunch of random loot inside of it. If we leave the chest, use the slash reset command and come back, there's a bunch more different loot this time, as well as that subscribe button, which you should absolutely press if this video has helped you out or if you've enjoyed it. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like and a comment about what you enjoyed. And if you want to watch more from me, I have this video right here where I show you how to make a minigame map reset system.